Hey everybody, it's Brandon from Lines on Paper, and today we are going to be reviewing Marvel Comics Meet the Scrolls, issue number one. I know a lot of people are probably expecting Doomsday Clock to be reviewed this week, being that it's the big release, but I've decided that I'm just going to review Doomsday Clock as a whole once it's concluded. Uh, we'll do the entire series in its entirety rather than issue by issue. I think that's probably a better way to tackle a uh, project of that scope. So in the meantime, let's dive into Meet the Scrolls. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Skrulls are an old-school Marvel villain. They are a race of shape-shifting aliens who infiltrate the Earth. They infiltrate all levels of government, of social life, everything. Uh, you never know who's a Skrull and who isn't. That's kind of their shtick. That's how they work. And uh, this book follows a sleeper cell of Skrull agents that are in America in a suburban family, kind of masquerading as a normal suburban family. Uh, you have the husband. He is masquerading as an employee at Stark Industries. Uh, the wife, she is an assistant to or a campaign assistant to a U.S. senator. And then they have two daughters. Uh, one of them's kind of a younger outcast type. Uh, the other is the popular girl, almost kind of a mean girl, really. Uh, but they are they have infiltrated a U or a U.S. suburban uh, neighborhood. They are deeply implanted and. They are approached by Skrull Intelligence because they have gotten wind that there is a new threat to them, a project being launched by the U.S. government called Project Blossom, which takes aim at finding a way to see through the Skrull shape-shifting disguise. So that would be a threat to pretty much every plan they have here on Earth. So uh, they are part of a mission to help derail that entire project. So uh, this book was put out by Robbie Thompson with art by Nico Henriken. Uh, not a very familiar with Nico Henriken's work, but uh, honestly, going through this book, I thought the art was fairly solid. Uh, the layouts are great. The page flows are, are really good. The story, it's put together that in a way that moves the story along well. Uh, good compelling scenes, good artistic choices. Uh, artwork's a little sketchy kind of looking. Um, some people like that, some don't. I think that uh, when done well, it's a very effective storytelling tool. It kind of gives comics an old school um, Dick Tracy kind of film noir kind of feel. I like that. Uh, Robbie Thompson's story is paced fairly well. Uh, as you can see, it starts off with um, a, f a family getting ambushed by kind of a men in black or, or shield agent. And they're obviously, they are uh, scrolls that have been targeted by this Project Blossom. And then it moves into the family and we'll learn more about them. And since this is Boyle of Free Review, uh, we're not going to get a lot into that. But I just wanted to let you guys know what the pages look like, kind of what to expect in the series. Uh, the book was good. I, I enjoyed the, the pace of the story. Uh, the characters seem interesting enough. I uh, don't know if I can give the series a full review, being that I'm only one issue in, but... I found the book interesting enough to make me at least want to pick up the next issue uh, to see where they take it, see where these characters are going. So uh, I definitely recommend that uh, you make your way down to your comic shop, go ahead and support them. Give this book a read if you're in a if you're in a position to maybe give a new book a chance, or if you're looking for a new book to read uh, that's maybe not quite in the superhero genre. This almost fits a bit more into the sci-fi slash slice of life kind of uh, genre of comic, which uh, isn't for everybody, but you know, that's uh, something that's sometimes underrepresented, especially by the, the big two, Marvel and DC. So uh, this book was definitely in the spirit of kind of the meet the visions. So if you were a fan of the Vision miniseries or the Vision series, I guess, short-lived, uh, that featured him and his family, definitely this is right up your alley. Uh, this kind of continues that same vein of storytelling. I would go ahead and give this a read. Um, good, good, solid recommendation from me. Uh, moving on, we got the poll list, the books that I'm recommending this week that I'm going to go be picking up and reading. Uh, first, of course, is Doomsday Clock, uh, the big the big Jeff Johns and Gary Frank opus. Uh, we've, we have Dr. Manhattan in the DC Universe, Watchmen crossover with the, your standard DC characters finally meeting up. Uh, very interesting book, uh, interesting uh, conflicts this week. We finally get to see Dr. Manhattan square off against... Uh, characters in the Marvel Universe. Very exciting. Go ahead and give it a read. Uh, like I said, I will be reviewing the series as a whole in its entirety um, when it wraps up, so watch for that video. Uh, next, we have Amazing Spider-Man 16.HU is our numbering system today. 
Uh, Nick Spencer continuing his run on Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, we're leading up to the big Hunted event, which is a Craven the Hunter uh, storyline that's been building up in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man lately. Uh, the book's been really interesting. I plan on doing a, a review of one of the later issues um, of Nick Spencer's run here. I've been enjoying it. Uh, they've got this uh, bi-weekly schedule, three artists kind of rotating in and out for the creative team. Uh, don't know if I quite like that, only because there are three artists that I really like. I'd rather see each one of them doing a monthly book. Quite frankly, I would rather an Amazing Spider-Man monthly title featuring Ryan Otley, who's one of the three artists, because I think any month that we don't get Ryan Otley drawn books is just a shame. The guy is super, super talented. And uh, Umberto Ramos and Chris Bocciolo are the other two that make up the art trilogy. And all three of those guys are fantastic artists. I would love to see them doing a monthly book. I just want to see more of their artwork. But uh, this one, again, is by Nick Spencer. And it's artwork, featured artwork by a guy named Aban Coelho. I'm sure I got that name wrong. But uh, I really enjoyed this guy's artwork. I thought it was very, very kinetic. Uh, his layouts were great. His... His uh, compositions were wonderful. I would like to see more from him. Hopefully he finds uh, maybe a regular book because I'd like to, certainly like to watch him grow as an artist. Uh, then we have Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. we got the March to the War of the Realms mega event storyline coming up, an Asgardian-centered story. But in the meantime, the Avengers are dealing with a vampire civil war. Uh, Dracula is making all kinds of problems in Northern Europe. we got Blade showing up to give the Avengers a hand. Uh, this has been a really good run of the Avengers. Jason Aaron really knows what he's doing with these characters. Um, very good story. Very good storyline so far. And we, they've got the backdrop of the BC Avengers, the kind of Stone Age Avengers that started it all. Really great stuff. Uh, go ahead and give this series a try if you haven't. Uh, the Immortal Hulk. This is by far Marvel's best series. If you aren't picking this book up, I highly, highly, highest possible recommendation that you run to your local comic book store and pick up not only the latest issue, but go all the way back to issue one. You will not be sorry. This is great superhero slash almost horror comic feel to it. Uh, they're definitely taking Hulk in a lot of different directions, really diving into the character and giving us some compelling stories. Al Ewing is... A He's in his element. This is He's a fantastic writer, at least on this book. His stuff is very, very good. Uh, Joe Bennett's the usual artist on this book, and he's been stellar. Kyle Hotz did this issue. Uh, the artwork is still pretty good. Uh, definitely recommend this issue and this entire series if you haven't been picking it up. And last but not least, we have The Uncanny X-Men number 13. Uh, Cyclops and Wolverine are kind of the last remnants left of the X-Men. Uh, they're trying to figure out what happened to the rest of the team after that big Legion story event that wrapped up a couple issues ago. Uh, they just assembled kind of their own quote-unquote X-Men team of uh, a lot of characters that you wouldn't normally see working together. You've got Havoc and Magic and Donnie Moonstar and Wolfsbane and a lot of others just random characters from a lot of different X-Teams have been thrown together into this book, um, you know, led by Cyclops and Wolverine trying to piece together the rest of the x-men and take on their latest threat it's a lot of good character stuff uh you could see a lot of characters normally don't interact with each other um where it, the big mystery of what happened to the x-men and how they're gonna how they're gonna put it right is front and center um i haven't picked up the x-men books in a while uh when this new uncanny x-men launch came out i didn't quite care for i didn't like the legion storyline a lot uh, but then they kind of found their grounding, I think, with this new story. We got Salvador La Roca providing the art, and uh, we know he's got the goods, so we're, we go ahead and trust him to draw these characters and, and give us a good-looking book every month. So uh, definitely go pick this up if you're a fan of the X-Men uh, or maybe haven't read the X-Men in a while and want to give it another shot. This is very reminiscent of those fun X-Men years in the 80s and 90s. Uh, at least that's how I felt about it. So uh, that's all I've got this week. I'll post a special video tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and see the Captain Marvel movie, and I'll post my review, spoiler-free, of course, uh, on the channel tomorrow if you guys want to know what I thought of it. Uh, definitely, if you guys think of any books that I should be reading and reviewing, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new stuff to uh, put on the channel. I know this week was kind of a Marvel-heavy week, but uh, blame the other publishers. They need to put out more stuff that I like. So... Um, uh, but yeah, any recommendations or any thoughts on the books that I did recommend? Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let me know. We'll talk. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe if you're in a position to. Um, support the channel. Help us grow. Visit our Patreon uh, from the link down below. 
And uh, have a great week, everybody. I will see you tomorrow for a special movie review of Captain Marvel. Have a great one. See you later. Bye.